Hello, it's Truth So Seeker here again, and I'm back with another game of Wands for you guys. Uh, I'm running Cutter this time around. Figure I've been trying out Cutter a good bit, just... I, I do like a lot of the things he can do. Um, I think he's really fun to play, at least just to give a different uh, experience from playing Covenant all the time. But the one problem I keep thinking is what would ever happen if you were to play against, say, Kinsana? Because I just don't know what I would actually do to counter her. Uh, the same problems seem to persist with Cutter that they would in, say, uh, Season 1. But anyway, we have a Cutter Mirror in this game. So I'm going to try out the build that I've been like talking about on and off lately, and that's with the Triple Barracks and uh, going for a Flamer Rush. So I'm going ahead and I'm getting supplies for our, from both of my guys here. I'm going to upgrade my supply pad, try and get that eco going. And uh, I'm thinking about the build uh, with just two supply pads and a generator and working with that. I think that you really don't need that strong of an eco to pump that efficiently. Uh, I'm going to buy this mini base rather early here just to, just to try and get that finished so I can go ahead and start building a barracks as soon as I can on that. And one other reason I built the extra marine is so that I can use him to try and cap one of the nodes because... I've noticed that you need to have really at least one other node finished mm. if you're going to make triple pumping work, because otherwise you seem to have a bit of a deficit in terms of power. So you see I'm queuing up a barracks. Uh, I queued up a supply pad in instinctively there. I get rid of it here, but that should have been a barracks as well. Mm. I also should be getting ready for... Uh, upgrading my generator because I haven't done that yet and I should also be looking to try and cap that node. I I don't know, I, I feel like I could have played that opening a little bit better. I was kind of just uh, breaking up, breaking away from the original strategy more or less. Or the main idea that I was having in mind here. But yeah, I realized that I built that supply pad so I'm going to go ahead and recycle that for a barracks now. And I'm going to go ahead and start capping this node. Something I should have also considered is uh, the bridge comes up at the two minute mark and it goes down at the three minute mark. So I should have sent something into the middle to uh, be there so that I could reactivate the bridge at an appropriate time. But I didn't think of that at the time. I was thinking I could kind of just get something on there at the whenever I whenever I was ready and just do it, but um, I wasn't able to. Also, I believe in the past you could put a marine in the garrison on one side and it would activate the bridge and you could activate the bridge from it but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore i don't know if they nerfed or they fixed rather that that uh, bug but i'm glad they did that because that seems a lot more fair at least because <laughs> having one side being able to activate the bridge from the garrison is kind of ridiculous so yeah i'm, I'm stacking up flamethrowers i went ahead and locked my base i guess it wasn't so necessary to because Obviously, if uh, they scout me and they see two barracks on my main and a barracks on my uh, mini base here, they're gonna know something's up. So I, I guess I could have left it unlocked. I guess I was just trying to be a little bit secretive. But yeah, the bridge went down now. I tried to put that flamethrower in the garrison to give me sight. And I was sending this marine over to try and cap the node, but I see he has two marines and a flamethrower, so I'm realizing there's no way I'm gonna be able to cap that. So I go ahead and just walk away. Also, that, that uh, gave me some information, me seeing that flamethrower, that told me that he was also going flamethrowers. Which did concern me a little bit, because theoretically, if we both went flamethrowers, um, if I were to hit him, he would have defender's advantage, which would give him the edge. So that did concern me. However, I am going to basically just wait till I hit max pop and then actually throw stuff at him. And see how that works. I'm kind of thinking... Uh, just looking back on this, if uh, he were to go more heavy snipers and turrets, I'm actually wondering if he would have uh, just been able to boom detect too, hold off my initial rush, because I my eco is somewhat crippled from this build, and I could see him potentially taking advantage of that by, you know, again, just trying to go lighter into it and go more defensive. That could be a potential counter to this idea, uh, is what I'm trying to say. 
Okay, so I was get, I was waiting for the bridge to come up, but I actually see that he, he was trying to push up himself, so I'm just going to go ahead and engage this this here because I see he has a lot of marines. Like he was going to mix of marines and flamethrowers, and I was going solely flamethrowers. Uh, so basically, my army is going to completely crush his, and I'm just going to try and push into him. I don't know if he has UNSC Raid 2 or not. Uh, I got the heal, so I didn't have to, which could have... Uh, Maybe could have allowed me to kill some more of his units. You see, I'm uh, sitting at a nice 75 pop still, which is really good, because I think I got a couple kills on his troops. I'm capping his node right now. And I honestly, at this point here, I should be thinking about recycling some of these barracks, because I'm at max pop. It's very unlikely I'm actually going to be able to reinforce uh, anything. So I, sh I probably should have just recycled them at this point and started to get my eco rolling more. Probably a supply pad, and then once that finishes, get a uh, generator or something. Uh, I don't know if I was just thinking about it right there, whether or not to do it. But yeah, I've capped that node now. So I have both of the nodes, uh, on the edges at least. And I'm going to try and push onto his base to buy me some time here for the potential transition. Again, at this point, I should have really already started to transition. That's something i got to just kind of think about better, how to address that. But yeah, you see I'm killing up a second generator at this point. I'm definitely going to be able to kill that base. And that, that had a heavy pad, so that's going to be a big win. Being able to kill that. I'm going to send a flame power back because apparently I didn't quite kill it. But yeah, you see I'm just going to basically just rip through these turrets here. And try and do as much damage as I can while I'm still on offense. He has that turret upgraded to anti-infantry, which is going to really hurt. Um... Honestly, uh, I thought I could take this turret out, but I probably should have just tried to aim his units down. Um, knowing what happened here, like you see my guys are literally just falling down and dying. It's, it's kind of a sad sight, to be honest. But I have those two supply pads up. I'm going to go double garage. I was actually thinking of what I should be going for here, but I think double garage is fine. Um, because I'm getting pretty close to tech 3. And if I can start making tanks, tanks are an excellent endgame unit. So if I can manage to just boom to that at this point, because I figure, okay, if I just build some turrets and if I have these flamethrowers play defense, then I should be able to hold any uh, push he would do on me. Because he's got to walk the whole way around or wait for the bridge. And I, I even have uh, two, of the, two of the nodes right now, and he only has one. So honestly, right now, I feel like uh, that rush really worked well for me in terms of the whole trade-offs and whatnot. I managed to sneak that one Marine away just to save him to potentially go for that node again. I'm going to go ahead and queue Tech 3 at this point. Um, tanks cost a lot of money. So the fact that I have a lot of supplies stored up is by no means a bad thing. Um, I'm going to definitely be hard-pressed for supplies in the near future. So you see I'm even upgrading... Uh, these pads just because I want to have my supply eco really really rolling uh, once I get reinforcements I'm actually going to want to try and get a an air pad up on top of uh, my double garage so that I can try and make nightling gales because nightling gales are so incredibly strong uh, of an option see I'm going ahead and I'm I was thinking about upgrading that, but I actually kind of realized, okay, my power situation is actually ridiculously good. I have three generators, two upgraded, and I have a node. And since I'm only making tanks right now, uh, I'm not going to need all that much power. I mean, I needed it for reinforcements right here, but other than that, I should honestly have enough power, plenty of power, to double pump tanks at least. See, the bridge goes up now. I'm going to send my guy across. Just to give me some more sight, potentially, on what could come. I'm going to go ahead and recycle these now because, well, I'm not going to be able to get much more use out of them. I was thinking about walking that marine away, but I figured he was at least far enough out of sight that I wouldn't have to worry about that. And, yeah, um, until I get at least some troops built up, I'm going to go ahead and just sit back and play defense. I go ahead and recycle that uh, field armory now because uh, I could have... I guess I could have tried to go for reinforcements too, but I I thought better would just be trying to prioritize going for uh, night lingos and trying to get my population really up. Actually, right here, um, my batteries were low, so my controller was disconnecting, 
and I was like, oh, oh no, I need to, <laughs> I need to do something about it, so uh, I'm going to grab batteries. I figured I would at least try and queue up things that would uh, be worthwhile, so I queued up the um, level up for the tank, because that'll take a while. I wanted to queue up canister shell. I don't know if I'm waiting for that before I discon disconnect my controller. I think, I think that's what I'm doing, honestly. So yeah, I'm gonna, oh, and my controller disconnected right before I could queue it. So, um, basically right here I'm just changing the batteries, uh, high level strats at their finest. And I'm gonna go ahead and queue that up, and at this point I'm thinking about going for a push on his base, because I, I honestly thought I was way further ahead than I actually was in this game. But yeah, I figure at this point, okay, I'm just gonna push on him, try and end the game. I see he's actually pulling his troops back, which uh, was really happy for me, or I was really happy to see that because, well, never, I mean, they're not really contesting anything in the middle anymore, which is always good. I'm going to send a Nightland Gale to the middle so that I can activate the bridge and try and cross over. I know he has that Marine hitting that mini base, but it's going to be a while till he can actually uh, kill it, so that's that's always good. I go ahead and destruct self-destruct that... Uh, air pad because yeah I mean being able to double pump tanks and single pump nightline gales the supply eco needed to do that would be honestly quite ridiculously high and I realized I couldn't do that um, I actually recycle this generator because I realized okay I really need supplies right now I have plenty of power and I did include a wolverine I think I have a second one building just because I wasn't sure if he was going air Honestly, I don't think air would have been that scary to me, because then I can just put wolverines in, and then, since I already have tanks, that would be excellent. But yeah, I see he's actually pushing in with tanks himself, so I'm going to go ahead and engage his tanks. I'll use my candies on them. He's going to drop a carpet bomb. So, right now, uh, he had three tanks. He's going to lose three, and I'm going to lose one. So, I honestly think that was a really good trade. Uh, that one tank's getting kind of low. I'm gonna, yeah, just try and micro that to the back there. Try and save that one tank. I'm gonna try and stay on that other tank that I'm engaging right now, because I really want to try and get the kill on that. Uh, do I get that kill? It looks like I'm probably going to. No, uh, it's close. It's close. But yeah, I don't want to lose tanks unnecessarily either, so you can see I'm trying to micro them in and out. I don't know if I actually got that kill or not, but seeing as he's only pursuing with one tank, uh, at the very least he's not willing to risk it anymore. But you see, I have three red bar tanks, and uh, I managed to kill so much with them. I think I've killed at least four tanks, and I lost one. So this is basically my way of saying, okay, I think I did a good job. I am pulling out now, and I'm going to get healed up, because that's... I mean, if tanks are like 700 each, that's 2100 right there in supplies that I can potentially be saving if I just pull back and get get a heal. Um, again, uh, like I like I've been saying, I think right now I should have just dropped a uh, a cyclops because that thing is so useful, and since it's on a timer to get it back, I think I should have just done it uh, right away. I know what I was kind of doing. I was kind of trying to save up supplies for other things, but. Honestly, I think I, I think I should have just dropped it. Although, to be fair, I had my uh, my thoughts concerned on other things, mainly the uh, the protection of those three tanks, because again, that they're pretty weak right now. Basically, almost anything can kill them, and I wanted to keep them alive. You, you look at that decap speed; though. it's pretty ridiculous. I think the I think the game was just sped up there, but even so, that was like an ridiculously fast speed to decap so yeah um, I'm rebuilding that air pad because even though I won't be able to constantly pump I really really need nightling gales obviously so I'm gonna try and go for that I was gonna try and run my marine up to the uh, other power node but I figured he would pretty much just uh, have something guarding it, or he would see him going up there, so he'd try and stop that. So I was going to just get in the garrison, but I see he's actually just going to cap, so I'm going to try and just start shooting at him. And yeah, I have that night like I'll just immediately go over to those tanks, because yeah, I know I definitely am going to want them there, that night Gale there. 
But yeah, she's pushing into the middle, which uh, didn't really concern me so much because I figured, okay, why can't I just start to cross through into your side now because the bridge is up. I don't really, honestly, I don't really think going around the long way is really such a good idea because, first off, if, if I ever spot you doing it, then it's going to take you a long time to get the whole way around. Uh, in this case, he was far enough along, and, my, and the bridge was in a situation where the bridge is about to go down, so I couldn't really exploit the fact that I saw him. But if uh, someone was able to, like if the bridge wasn't about to go down, I think this would be a lot worse for him. But you see, I had to stop, and I had to try and select this because uh, uh, the bridge was down. And of course, I could have tried going for the base trade, but I figure, you know, I got a lot more tanks than him. So I figured I would play it safe, and just come back and play D, because I figured my army was bigger than his. And I should be able to get a pretty decent trade-off. And of course, I tell that tank to go behind the base, and it's kind of just getting stuck on my base. But yeah, I'm going to try and have my, my uh, tanks just in the front and defending like that. I saw he already used his cannies on that one tank, which made me happy, because that basically tells me he doesn't have them anymore. And yeah, I'm gonna just keep making a couple more Nightling Gales. I know he has Marines for the, I guess what you could call anti-air, but I really do not think that's enough. I think you need more. But yeah, you see like, basically I traded maybe two tanks for the bulk of his army. And that was a really, really good trade, just pulling back to deal with that. I could have went in for the base trade, but I knew he had turrets and I didn't know what he had on defense. And since I knew I could beat what he had on offense, I thought that was just a, a better option overall. Just to come back and deal with that. I mean, I even have tier 3 tanks, so direct engagement should at least be equal for me. I'm going to send these marines down, try and go for the nodes potentially. Or at least that one, because I guess I only need one node to be captured right now. And, uh... I guess I was waiting for me to get my pop-up. I was upgrading air so that uh, potentially I could do a transition and it'll just make Nightling go stronger. But honestly, I, I probably could have just pushed right now. Um, I know I just killed a big portion of his army. I guess I was just waiting for me to get pop-up, but again, there doesn't really seem to be a need to wait anymore. I have at least semi-decent amounts of Nightling Gales and my tank numbers are pretty high. I definitely have more than him right now. Yeah, see, he has that one tank there. I guess he just realized that uh, I was pushing through and he was going to try and come back with it, but at this point it's too late. I have that Marine of the Garrison now, so I have a little bit of extra sight, uh, potentially. If I ever need to pull back to this Marine. Um, I guess instead I'm going to send it that Garrison. I don't know what happened to the other Marine. I guess something intercepted it and killed it. I'm going to send it down to that that node. And basically right now, um, I'm just waiting until I have enough for a gunship. Because I figure that should be enough to help crack through whatever it is he has right now. See, I'm sitting on 1,400 supplies. I'm just waiting for another 100. Um, I do have ODST drop and uh, the Psychops drop as well. So I'll be able to use them once I actually start engaging. But yeah, like you see, he has four, four railgun turrets and... Honestly, I could probably have stayed in and fight, fought that anyway, but, I mean, if I can just use the gunship to deal with that, I didn't really see why I needed to engage that. But what I will go ahead and do is go ahead and just try and sneak around and get this mini base and snipe that off. And you can see he even pulled his army away because he just didn't want anything to do with that. But, yeah, you can see uh, I pretty much shattered through his uh, defenses now. He doesn't have that many units left for actual defense, so I'm just going to go ahead and canister them down. And that's pretty much going to wrap up the game. So, hope you guys enjoyed this, uh, this video. If you did, please leave a like. It always helps. And I will see you guys in another one. So, take care. Mm -hmm.